Welcome to our segment on music notation. This chapter will cover basic music notation principles. If you are already familiar with music notation, you certainly can skip this chapter. Knowledge of music notation is very useful, not only for reading and writing your music scores, but it helps you better understand the MIDI language. After all, MIDI is based on the same fundamental ideas as written music. These five lines here are called a staff. You can say they represent the frequency or identity of a sound. The staff divides music into bars or measures. Bars are again subdivided into beats. On the left hand side you see our time signature 4 over 4. The top number here tells us we have four beats in each bar and the bottom number tells us what kind of note represents one beat. In this case a quarter note equals one beat and hence four quarter notes will fill our bar. A half note is two beats long and two half notes will fill this bar. A whole note is four beats long and will fill this bar. Here you see a graphical representation of a whole note. Half note, quarter note, eighth note, sixteenth note, and so on. These are the durations of the notes, or how long they play. Each note is half the duration of the note above. But what about notes which have an odd number of beats, three, five, and so on? These notes can be written in two ways. You can dot the note. A dot after your note adds 50% of its value. In this case, a dotted half note will play for three beats. You can also use a tie. The tie is a symbol which combines the duration of several notes. In this case, the half and the quarter together last for three beats. Now let's take a look at rest symbols. Rests follow the same mathematical logic as notes, but instead of representing sound, they represent silence or a rest from sound. Here are some graphical representations of a whole rest, a half rest, the quarter rest, the eighth rest, sixteenth rest, and so on. A dot symbol after your rest will extend the rest duration 50%. Same with the notes. For example, this dotted half rest here lasts for three beats. A tie symbol can be used to link more than one rest together. Here, this half and quarter rest tied together last for three beats. Now, let's talk about note pitch. The pitch of a note is determined by how high or low its position is on the staff. The higher you see it on the staff, the higher its pitch. The lower its position on the staff, the lower the pitch of the note. The clef on the left side of the staff specifies the musical range where the staff is positioned. Most commonly you're going to see are the treble clef and bass clefs. A few more words on notes. The relationships between notes can be measured in whole steps and half steps. Here, the step between C and D is a whole step, and the step between C and C sharp is a half step. The steps between E and F, as well as the steps between B and C up above, are also half steps. If you count from C forward towards D, the black key here is a C sharp. If you count the other way, B backwards down to C, the same key can be called D flat. Here we've got 
a sharp symbol, a flat symbol, and a natural symbol. The natural symbol specifies a note, which is played without flat or sharp symbols. A few words now about dynamics and accent markings. The natural symbol specifies a note which is played without flat or sharp symbols. Here you can see how the relationship between the piano and the written music works. The C key is represented by this note, but C sharp by this one. The B note is here, and B flat is here. Another way to write down sharp and flat notes is to use your key signature. When a flat or sharp symbol is written right after a clef, it's called a key signature. All the notes on all the lines are affected by it. Here, all three notes will play as C sharp. And the note after the natural symbol plays as C natural. A few words now about dynamics and accent markings. Legato here means that these notes are connected to each other. In other words, no spaces between the notes, very soft attack, played smoothly. Staccato, next, is opposite of legato. The notes are played slightly shorter than written. Accents direct you to play a note with more emphasis or a more aggressive attack. Marcado usually is something between legato and staccato. This can be indicated with a various combination of lines, dots, slurs, and accents. Slurs and glissandos. Glissando is a continuous slide in pitch, or in other words, a smooth bent pitch from one note to another. And a slur is a smooth transition from one pitch to another. P and F here stand for piano and forte, which in Italian means soft and loud, respectively. Double FF means very loud, fortissimo, and triple FFF is very, very loud, and so on. Double PP is a pianissimo, and a triple P is very, very soft, and so on. MP and MF mean medium soft and medium loud. Here we see crescendo and decrescendo. A crescendo indicates that you need to gradually get louder. A decrescendo means you gradually get softer. And this concludes our music notation tutorial.